my name is Tashina Alavi, and uh, I work as a digital analyst. This means that I collect data from people like you every day to help companies understand your behavior. I love my job. It's the first occupation I've ever had where I really feel like I'm allowed to ask just as many questions as humanly possible because <laughs> there's no one to get annoyed and uh, the data doesn't judge. And I love human psychology, I love human behavior, and uh, all of that goes really well into play when you're working with uh, analyzing data. But lately, I've had some sort of, let's just call it identity crisis in regards to my occupation. Why? Because every day when you turn on the news and there's something related to data, there's always something negative going on. There's, you know, a company that have sold um, personal information. There's the Cambridge Analytica scandal. Netflix recently came out with the social dilemma, which was highly discussed. And uh, all of this affected me because I work with collecting data. And so I had to really sit down and think about my occupation in terms of um, in the ethical sense. And I questioned myself and thought, you know, is what I'm doing ethical? Is it moral? And I started doing some research. And during this research, I found something very fascinating. Something that I thought, you know, I wanted to discuss today, which is every single time that the media is talking about customer data collection, they're always talking about the consequences that we get from sharing our data to companies, but never about the benefits that we receive. Which is kind of strange because, sure enough, there must be some benefits of sharing our data to companies. Because whether we like it or not, our data is being collected every single day, everywhere. At home, at work, from our laptop, from our computer, even from our watches. This is the reality. And this is going to continue in the future, probably even more. And because of this, I think our society and people deserve to know the benefits of sharing our data to companies just as much as the consequences. By doing this, you can get a more holistic view of how your data is used in society which can also give you a more, which can also make you mm, understand how your data is used and make you more informed of where you're standing and how far you're willing to go to receive benefits. And so today I'm going to talk about the benefits of sharing your data to companies. And if you think I'm doing this to make myself feel better about my occupation, you're not wrong. This is my redemption moment. <laughs> but I also genuinely hope that you will receive some value and also reflect upon um, how your data is used in society and how far you're willing to go for um, your data and uh, how much you're willing to share of it. So today I'm going to discuss four benefits of sharing your data to companies. And to spice things up, I'm also going to share with you one consequence of sharing your data to companies. And since you've already heard about security, privacy violation, GDPR breaches, etc., etc., a million times before, this is not what I'm going to discuss when it comes to consequences. We're going to go beyond that. I'm going to talk about something that is often not discussed in media, but deserves some recognition still, and might even come as a surprise for you. So stay tuned, I'm going to talk about that a little later. And during the presentation, I also want you to have these two questions at the back of your mind. How much would you be willing to share of your data to receive benefits? And question number two, 
do you do you think that companies collecting your data is a force for good or evil? So without further ado, let's begin. So benefit number one, increased security. I put this on purpose as benefit number one because when I was doing my research, um, one thing I noticed was that the number one consequence that the media is always talking about is the insecurity and unsafetiness of sharing our data to companies. But I wanted to flip the coin and take a look at the other side. And uh, what I'm arguing is if all of us are being tracked and Big Brother is watching us from everywhere, this means that the bad guys are also being tracked. So let me give you an example. When I lived in South Africa in Cape Town, the locals would always tell me to use an Uber instead of a local taxi because it was safer, they said. And uh, why is it safer? Well, because the app is tracking your every single move and collecting data about you wherever you go. And not just you as the consumer, but also the driver. So wherever the driver is picking you up and wherever the driver is dropping you off, the data is following him or her everywhere. So what they were suggesting was that the app and the data that I was sharing to this app would make things safer for me and for the driver. And if you're still not feeling convinced, let me give you another example. So the police actually use data pretty often from social media apps to catch criminals. In 2008, there was a famous case in the United States where the police catched um, 72 criminals from a notorious street gang. And they did this by pulling out vast amounts of data from Facebook and then using technology to see how this network were connected to each other. And it was a very successful operation, and they did this thanks to data. So yeah, one could say that by sharing our data to companies, we are actually creating a safer society. Benefit number two, getting access to free services. So what do I mean by this? Have you ever thought why social media platforms such as Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, even online publications such as Expressen, Aftonbladet, Jette Boys Posten, why are they free to use? Why are you able to become a member for free and even read these articles for free? Well, actually, it's not entirely free. It's free in the sense of you don't have to pay any cash, but you're still paying these companies. You're paying them with your time, your attention, and your data. So how it works is that a company, for example, is on Facebook, and they tell Facebook that we, uh, we want to target this and that audience um, uh, in this and that age group from this and this country, et cetera, et cetera. And Facebook, they have huge amounts of data, so they give that company that data and that's target audience, and then the company pays Facebook. And then Facebook is able to provide you with a free platform. And social media networks are extremely good at using this uh, business model to profit. They have an infrastructure make, which makes it possible for you as the user to upload content, but it also makes it possible for them to analyze your content, to see how you're thinking and behaving. And then they provide that information to other companies so that bid on you. Which makes it also interesting because in the end, what does that make you? Does that make you the product or does that make you the consumer? Actually, it makes you both. And online publications have a very similar model. When you are entering Aftonbladet or Jotte Boys Posten, you uh, consent to cookie tracking. And then you share your data to these um, online publications. But not only do you share your data to them, you're also sharing your data to third party providers. So these online publications usually have some kind of collaboration with advertising agencies. 
So they give that data, they give your data to these advertising agencies, and then the advertising agencies pay them. So then you're able to read those articles for free. So the question here might be, are you willing to provide your data to receive these benefits for free? Benefit number three. This is one of my favorite benefits. Um, so I've been touching upon personalized ads before, but there's one aspect about it that is very often not discussed, which is personalized ads, they give small companies a chance to grow and they give me as a consumer a chance to discover them. So what do I mean by this? So this is an ad that I saw quite recently on Instagram. It's from a company called Java Whiskers, very cute name. And um, it's a cat cafe in Stockholm. And when you are at the cafe, you're also able to adopt a cat. And of course I was targeted because I'm obsessed with cats. But what I found so interesting about this case is that even though this company um, didn't have that many followers, at least the last time I checked, they were still able to cut through the noise and get past all these big company names and reach out to me and catch my attention, which is amazing. Because if you think about it, back in the days, only companies with huge marketing budgets were able to do this. Let's compare a TV commercial with an Instagram ad. So a TV commercial can cost anywhere between 100,000 to 400,000 Swedish crown today. And that's a 30 second TV commercial. And I'm not even talking about the production around it. And now let's compare that to an Instagram ad that can cost around 70 Swedish crown per 1,000 views. That's a huge difference, right? So this means that smaller companies can now compete with these bigger giants to get a market share and get more customers. And never in history has it been so easy, so cheap and so convenient for smaller companies to reach out to a bigger audience across the whole world. And I think social media networks, they definitely deserve some recognition for being able to give these companies these smaller companies a platform where they can reach out to their customers. But social media platforms would be nothing if they didn't have that vast amount of data that they get from, you guessed it, from us. So these personalized ads, they give incredibly value because I'm able to see ads that are very relevant to me that you know, I, I'm able to support companies that I believe in. It gives me more alternatives and smaller companies get a chance to compete with the bigger giants and also create a more balanced economy and society. All right, so the last benefit before we are moving into the consequence of sharing your data to companies. Sharing our data to companies can help to keep us informed. So have you ever, I'm sure all of us, most of us have probably forgotten, a birthday, a bill that was due, a flight we had to check into at one point or another. And it's super annoying when it happens. But by sharing our data to companies, we let them do the job for us and keep us informed and updated about things that are important to us without us having to store that information into our own brain cells. So I wanted to give you two examples. This is from a travel agency and they're telling me that my flight is ready for check-in. This is incredibly valuable information. This, you know, makes my life easier, makes everything, you know, just better because I don't have to store anything into my own brain cells. And um, it's, it's just great. It just makes things easier. It's nothing salesy. It's nothing creepy. They're basically just telling me that, hey, if you want to catch a good seat, here's your chance to do so, which is amazing. But they would not be able to do this if they didn't have my data. 
And this is another example I wanted to share with you. So this is an event company. It's a push notification and they're telling me that the tickets for the Air Clapton concert are ready for purchase. And so some of you might not be Air Clapton fans and that's okay. Um, but if you were, this would be information that you would find incredibly valuable because what if you would find out too late and then the tickets would be sold out? You would be bummed, right? All right, so just a quick pulse check. I need to drink some water. We have now uh, finished the four benefits of sharing your data to companies and we are about to enter the consequences or the consequence, there's one consequence. So I hope you guys that found the link are still with me. <laughs> I'm very happy you're here. All right, so what is the consequence that I wanted to discuss with you guys about? Personalization. Yes, I was literally just raving about all the benefits of personalization, and now I'm telling you that it's wrong. So what the hell is going on? Let me explain. So when you are um, on Google and searching for something, or you're on social media and clicking around, maybe you're very into cat videos like me, um, the algorithms get a signal that you're very into this. So then they start sending it out to you more and more often. So then you start seeing these cat videos more and more often. But what I'm saying is, seeing too much of the things that you're interested in is not the best for you. And it's not the best for society either. I want to give you one extreme example of this. So, in 2016, the Pizzagate conspiracy theory came alive. It was a bunch of right-wing extremists that were basically telling people that Hillary Clinton is involved in a child sex trafficking ring in Washington, DC. And um, th this had no evidence whatsoever, whatsoever and turned out to be completely false later. But a lot of people actually believed in it. And once it hit social media, it just went viral and uh, just blew up. And it finally got so far that this guy, 28 year old Edgar Welch from North Carolina, he decided to take matters into his own hand. So he traveled from North Carolina to Washington DC to this humble little pizzeria and uh, with a gun and a rifle, he fired inside of the restaurant because he thought that they were captive children inside of this restaurant. Luckily, no people were injured and no captive children were found. But what Edgar did prove was that too much personalization and a hell of a lot of fake news can seriously damage our society and jeopardize our democracy. And now I know that this was a very extreme case and most of you probably don't have right-wing extremist propaganda in your social media feeds. But even if you don't, think about it for one second. Don't we all have a bit of a one-sided story portrayed in our social media feeds? I mean, even I can somehow relate to Edgar's case, even though, like I said, it's not as extreme. But even I can acknowledge that being shown too many cute cat videos all the time might not be the healthiest for me. I, I might have become a more intelligent person, smarter person, getting a better view of what is going on in the world. If instead of being shown these entertaining and very cute cat videos, I was shown, for example, something super random, like how the Inuits in Canada live. I mean, this is not something I usually do research in or Google, but this is information that I think would be very valuable for me and not only to me, but also to society. And too much personalization might not always lead to a gunman setting a restaurant on fire. But sure enough, it can also be extremely creepy. So. Netflix, they're very open about the fact that they personalize their thumbnails based on their users. So if you're a woman, 
you might see the thumbnail on the left. <laughs> and if you're a man, you might see the thumbnail on the right. All right, that's a marketing trick to get me to click on these thumbnails. I can roll with that, fine. But this is when things start to get a little out of control and creepy. So this is a movie about, it's called Like Father. It's about a woman that is trying to sort out her relationship with her dad. These are the two leading actors in the movie, as you can see in the thumbnail. But when black viewers would enter the site, this is what they were being shown. So these actors have a 10 minute line in the entire movie a 10 minute line in the entire movie. And this is what Netflix was showing to their black viewers. So why on earth was Netflix showing this to their black viewers? So this is not just a case of personalization gone extremely creepy and also being deceitful, but it's, it's just, you know, very wrong. And Netflix, of course, denied that they, um, that they personalized their thumbnails based on the race of the viewer. They say they never do such a thing. But um, I'm not quite sure if I believe them. I think what I'm trying to say is that too much personalization can, frankly, make us stupid and dumb. Because in the end, we're all just sitting there in our own little bubbles, surfing the internet, not being shown anything outside of our own scope and interests, anything new. Which is quite ironic because with the internet, we've never been so connected to the world as we are today. Maybe we should not always be shown what we want, but what we need. And so finally, what happened to my identity crisis that I was talking to you guys about in the beginning of this presentation? Well, I got over it, and I realized that not everything is as black and white as it seems. I believe I get lots of benefits by sharing my data to companies, but I also do believe that it comes with a price. Are you willing to pay that price? And the final question that I want you to reflect upon is this. Do you believe companies collecting your data is a force for good or evil? Thank you.